Welcome to Talk Bowling, episode 124. I'm Dustin Seymour. I'm Tony Rucco. Talk Bowling is proud to bring you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet bowling website, BowlingBall.com. I just noticed in my notes, it's not world's largest internet bowling website. It's just bowling website. That's true. Never because been. there's no websites that aren't on the internet, so it's redundant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll jump right in with that lovely thought this morning. Question from YouTube. Up a book of websites. <laughs> How do I improve my release to a point of it being clean and giving me a moderate amount of hook on a medium to longer sports shot oil pattern? I've tried cupping the ball, but it is difficult to stay under the ball past it coming down past my leg. I bowled in the Junior Gold Nationals this year, and I was only able to see any movement from my Nirvana on the short oil pattern and on any of the other oil patterns there would be about enough hook to take out the 8 pin if I shot straight from the right gutter to the pocket. My ball speed is also not very pass, fast at about 12 to 14 miles per hour. I just want to know a ma way to make my release clean and come around the ball enough to generate a few boards of hook on a longer oil pattern so I can be more competitive based on my carry. A side note, I made 97% of single double pin spares, but the larger count spares and lack of striking power, what made me miss the cut? Travis Knox. I read that question on purpose, so you'd have to jump in. Well, okay, spares. first let me say <laughs> Travis. That's really good spare shooting. 97%, um, that's pretty, pretty solid. Uh, so you're ahead of the game there. I'm a little confused because at first he says medium longer sport patterns, then he says he could only get hooked from his Nirvana on the short oil pattern, and then he goes back to wanting hook on the longer oil pattern. So I think that might have been a little typo in the middle. Um, I'm thinking. I think he's not getting enough hook when there's more oil or a longer pattern. Yeah. You throw it fairly slow. So. Could, you might just need it, it could be your layouts could be the surfaces you know maybe you need to go you know a little bit lower yeah. grit I'm thinking uh, Travis is a young kid yeah for um, sure. and at 12 to 14 miles an hour unless there's a lot of oil yeah. don't ever put a Nirvana in your hand right, it's right. going to burn up right. so you may just need a ball down yeah, like that's true. Yeah. <laughs> at 12 miles an hour the ball can't store energy right. uh, something that strong can't store energy I know it sounds backwards but if you would go to something a little bit lower or less aggressive, maybe with some you know some shine on it, you may actually see more hook on those oil patterns. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot. You here. just have to experiment, really. Yeah, um, it's tough if you don't practice on sport shots a lot. So let's say you just go to a tournament and you figure, oh wow, there's going to be a lot more oil. So let me bring really strong balls, strong surfaces. And then you're not seeing hook. Well, you have to experiment. Uh, start with something a little bit less aggressive, then you can either go up or go down from there. Yeah. You have, just have to really see what reacts for you on that. But yeah. like Tony said, you throw it slow. So. And you may also want, um, I know it's not you know, a cool thing because you see all these guys on TV with their wrist and their cup in it and they're doing all this crazy stuff. Um, you may want to try throwing a wrist device on. If you're that young, it, I'm assuming you're young. I'm yeah. hoping I'm not talking to a 17 year old. Um, if you're that young, throw a wrist device on and let it help you keep your wrist in that position. Put something on that moves, um, you know, Pro Release or I don't know what's out there now. What do they call them? Z-Locks, Gizmos, whatever. Put those on. Uh, let it help you. Let it assist you. And you could probably take it off after a year or so once your hand and your muscle memory pick that up. But you say something about cupping the ball, but you can't cup it once it gets down past your leg. And, yeah, you may need to try throwing a wrist device on for a little while, too. But... Um, also, it's it's a lot different when you're bowling on longer or heavier patterns. Like, it's different. You know, on a house shot, you just throw the ball, throw it. You know, throw it to the to the right, watch it come back. You have to get the ball started in yeah. a roll earlier. So maybe move your target up a little bit on the lane. That normally will help you get the ball started. Yeah, sooner. and keep Stay in mind, behind the ball. Like Dustin said, you're not going to see a big change of direction on a lot of these sport patterns. You will. I mean, on the shorter ones, obviously, but. A lot of times these sport patterns are built 
so you don't see those huge change of directions, and you and it it puts a premium on shot making of getting you know hitting your target, getting the ball to the break point at the right spot on the lane. So you're throwing it straighter, it's fine. You don't have to you know if you have to play up the right side or, or point it at the head, then that's totally fine. There's been tons of people that have made their careers off of throwing it straight. It's so <laughs> just do whatever works. You know? Yeah. Thanks, Travis. All right, question from Facebook. How do you know when it's time to change balls? You guys have we should have like an hour and a half, two music. hours. Um, my rule is if I don't strike. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and he strikes all the time. Yeah, so. when when the ball when the shape I'm getting isn't right, like when I when I feel like I've lost the break point shape I want and I can't make a change or the ball doesn't fit the break point shape I need anymore, then I make a change. If I'm bowling league. Yeah, it's league. You don't have to make that many moves anymore. But, uh, you know, if I go flat 10, I'll make a, a little adjustment with my hand first. If I go flat 10 again, I'll maybe make a move with my feet. Flat 10 again, I change bowling balls. And I'll do that across the lane. So if I go, you know, 7 pin, I'll make a little hand adjustment first. Do it again, I'll make a move. Do it again, change balls. Yeah. There's a couple ways to look at it. I mean, you really have to... One key to, to knowing if you have the right ball in your hand is watch how the ball goes through the pin. So, yeah. um, if the ball's coming in at too sharp of an angle or not enough angle, you either have to change what you do with your hand, where you're standing on the lane, or you have to switch balls. Um, if I like the shape of the motion that I'm getting, there comes a point where you can only move so far and then that angle is totally you're different for yeah. that ball. So you have to go to something different. Yeah. Um, but I mean, carry is if you're not carry if you just suddenly start not carrying something's changing and you need yeah. to make a change. Um, and when I'm bowling league, I mean it's probably the lazy way to do it, but I usually don't want to think that much. So a lot of times in practice, I may not love my ball motion, but I'm thinking that I'm not going to have to change balls until <laughs> the end of the second game or third game. Like I know the way the lanes are going to go, I'm going to be fine in a few frames. I'm going to let this break down naturally, and, and I'll be fine. So sometimes I make a lazy choice to not change balls because I know it's going to be fine. You know, and on you know you're going to strike. I mean, you know, it's not like you're going to shoot 110. Um, so I'll make a lazy decision to line up for the second game in the practice and. Be ready to go. Yeah, I think if you if you know your equipment, you shouldn't be afraid to make a change. But also, don't change. Just be you know. Don't yes. change. You have to. There's a, a happy medium. Don't be scared to change, but don't switch balls every two frames. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You have to kind of let it happen. Yeah, just let it let it work. Let it build. Come up with all kinds of metaphors for that. Um, thanks for that question. And upcoming releases, the list has dwindled. It has. Uh, 12 6, Ebonite Maverick and Track Cyborg Pearl. It'll be good ones. When is this episode that we're doing? Uh, late November. Okay. Ball videos should be up for those balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we give a bowling ball away each week on bowlingball.com. All you have to do is click on the 52 Weeks, 52 Winners image on the right side of the page to register. And uh, you do have to sign up each week because it does erase and roll over. So reset. make sure you do that. Reset. There's the word. <laughs> All right. Bowlingboards.com also gives away a bowling ball each week. Uh, head over to bowlingboards.com, register, and make at least one post per week to be entered. You can also go to facebook.com forward slash bowlingboards. Uh, make a post or a comment on there to be entered as well. And again, that resets also. Pyramid Bowling also gives has a giveaway each week. And that's on their Facebook page. And it's facebook.com slash pyramid bowling. And it's not always a ball, but sometimes it's a bag. And it's always something good. So head on over each week. All right. And if you'd like to contact Dustin or myself... <laughs> Feel free to email us. And I can us. type it, not have to speak it because I can't speak right now. <laughs> Feel free to email us questions at talkbowling.com, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash talkbowling, on Twitter at talkbowling, or you can leave a comment on talkbowling.com. That's right. Do people tweet us? Sometimes. Dustin's in charge of all that, so I don't know. We need more tweets. Tweet us. At talkbowling. I just winked at the camera. Well, 
I was going to say something, but I'm glad I didn't. Tweet us. (laughs) Sliding them DMs. All right. All right. Last week's question of the week. Who was the first African-American inducted into the ABC Hall of Fame, and what year were they inducted? ABC is what USBC used to be. And the answer is J. Elmer Reed, which is an awesome name. And that was in 1978. Way to go, Jay Elmer. <laughs> this week's question of the week. What is the record for 300 games in a day, and who holds the record? I don't know. I don't know them. I don't know them. But I, I didn't know them. I didn't know them. <laughs> okay. It's Got a lot. That? It's a lot. All right. Well, I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, very expensive Black Friday. No, I'm just kidding. It's not there yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, it would have been. Yeah. We said late November. You can't get much later. Yeah, I think it's like 24. That's, that is Thanksgiving. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, well. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in closing, uh, please remember that BowlingBall.com is free shipping on every item every day. No hidden handling fees, no packaging fees, no added insurance fees, no minimum purchase required. The price shown is the price you pay at checkout. Bowlingball.com, it's where bowlers go. Thank you. Thanks.